About three years ago, we worked on an EP um, for Scion, was doing uh, EPs and seven inch series, and they asked us to do an EP, and I went to Nashville to work on that. I had a studio booked, and Dan from the Black Keys was gonna produce it. He had just moved there, and he had worked, he had helped me with an album that I did in Nashville about a year previous. Uh, it was a side project called The Parting Gifts, so um, I went back to Nashville to work on this EP, and I had tapped some people to possibly play on it, uh, a drummer and bass player. And by the time the project came to fruition and I was going to Nashville to cut it, um, those people had other gigs, weren't available, and so I had called Mikey Post, who I knew from the Javons. They had opened a tour for us, and so I knew those guys pretty well. And Raining Sounds keyboard player Dave actually played keyboards with them as well. So we all know we knew each other really well. And I asked them if they wanted to come and help me work on the CP. And they said, yeah. So um, that was the beginning of the new lineup. And like I said, that was about three years ago. So we actually did an EP together before we did this album together. I haven't done the Compulsive Gamblers in a long time. And when that band folded, um, was kind of when I started this project. And initially, the first Raining Sound record was really just a vehicle for me to do lots of ballads and kind of uh, something with a more kind of subdued quality to it. And the first record is like a qualude or something. I mean, it's, everything is very mellow, very slow, ballads, minor key, no rockers. Um, and once I got that out of my system, that was kind of a palate cleanser for me. And then I was ready to move back towards something like Compulsive Gamblers that would be a little bit of balladry and, and also some rock songs and some kind of R&B things happening and kind of a, a, just a real kind of Memphis stew of, of all those kind of influences. Um, and I think that was what motivated doing Raining Sound was to have something that was like the Compulsive Gamblers or the, would, would be a vehicle that was like that for me to write those kind of songs. And I didn't really have anything like that at the time. It's been great. They've been fantastic. Um, all of the other labels I ever worked with, Crypt, In the Red, Sympathy, <clears throat> all those labels were basically one guy. You know, there's not really a label. I mean, there is a label, but it's just one guy. There's not um, a bunch of people running around an office doing things or <laughs> mailing out promo or anything like that. It's just, you know, basically one person. Um, so for me, it was an opportunity to work with a label that really had an apparatus in place to help the artist not just get better distribution, but also to help promote the record, um, help the artist get the record where it needed to be um, as far as not just mom and pop stores, but uh, bigger chains and places where anybody anywhere in the United States could get the record. And that was, to me, that was a big step up, you know, as far as just the presence of the record out there to the public. Well, we took a long hiatus. We didn't play with each other for a long time. Um, not because the dynamic didn't work anymore, so much as that we were just really sick of each other. Um, you know, I think that's the thing when you're in a band and you're, you're, you're in a garage band or, or, or just a rock and roll band, you're, you're traveling around playing nightclubs and stuff. You, you tend to be in friends, your, your band is just you and your buddies, and you're already spending a ridiculous amount of time together because um, you're geeking out about the same kind of things, you know, and your, your musical interests and everything. And then you get on the road for a few years and you really spend too much time with each other. And, and that's kind of what happened to us. And luckily we kind of saw that happening and said, let's just, let's stop doing this. This is, you know, I think we've said everything we have to say with this. And, and it kind of took a few years before we really wanted to even hang out again. And then once that happened, then... Um, the opportunity came up for some shows. We did a couple shows. That was really fun. Then a, an opportunity came up for a tour where it would be us and the Gorys who hadn't played together for years, and we were going to do a tour of Europe. 
And that was fantastic. It was so fun. We had such a good time. The only problem was we were playing the songs probably better than we even played them in 94 or whatever. You know, it's like playing them every night and being that we're, we're better players now. The songs came back and we found the dynamics and we lock into it and that's really fun for a while. And then you get to a point at the end of the tour where you're like, now I'm sick of these songs again. You know, <laughs> I was sick of them 10 years ago, now I'm sick of them again. So I didn't, you know, kind of our thought was, well, this feels really great and it's good to be playing together again, but if we're gonna keep doing this from time to time, tours here or one-off shows, um, it was important for us to be able to play new songs and not just be a human jukebox or something, you know, so I'm, I'm not interested in that. I'm trying to get songs together right now. Coco, um, who's a friend of mine that lives in Nashville, her and her husband Jim had that band, The Etts, and we worked together to do the Parting Gifts record. And Coco came up to Asheville recently and we're starting to kind of flush out all the songs for a Parting Gifts record. So my next couple things on, the, on my plate are to finish this Parting Gifts record and put that out and then work on another Branding Sound record probably. It's so much different now. Um, for one, so much of it is happening in Brooklyn and you know, all, it's so much more um, encompassing of, of the, the whole area in New York City and around New York City and the boroughs and everything. It's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's expanded some. Um, I, you know, I tend to um, kind of, I have similar kind of anxiety about situations like CMJ and um, going to Austin, Texas for South By and stuff like that. Like, it almost seems like an overload for me. Like there's so much that it's hard for me to focus. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I know it's a good thing. I know it's, um, it's nothing but positive for the bands who are looking for that exposure. It's different for me because I've been doing this for so long um, that I'm not where I was 20 years ago, where I'm dying for some exposure. I just want somebody to see what I do other than a bar where, you know, with 20 people in it, you know, you want to be somewhere where um, labels can see you and booking agents can see you. And, and for that, I think it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm.